This is the 2022 Marin Gestalt X11. It was named after a popular Marin County beer house where it was conceived. I'm going to show you some details of this bike and hopefully tell you enough that you can decide if this is a bike that you might consider. In the Gestalt family of bikes, there are four different Gestalts and two Gestalt Xs. This Gestalt X11 is the fanciest of all of those and it is $29.99 Canadian or $24.49 US dollars. While all the regular Gestalts in the Gestalt family of bikes have 2x drivetrains and 32C tires, these Gestalt Xs have bigger tires, 40C tires, and all have 1x drivetrains. Along with that, their geometry is much more suited to the rigors of gravel and light off-road use. Marin specs the Shimano GRX 11-speed rear derailleur on this bike. GRX is Shimano's gravel-specific group set, and that clutch is an important part of this bike working really well on gravel. The pronounced spring tension on there makes your chain essentially tighter so that it's less likely to bounce off of either your cassette or off your chain ring on the front. So when combined with the narrow wide chain ring on these cranks, you have a really good robust way of holding your chain, um, very unlikely for it to bounce off when you're riding through gravel or single track. The other big part of having a one by drivetrain is having a wide range cassette. This one is suitably wide with a range from 11 to 42 teeth and that's matched up with a 42 tooth narrow wide chain ring on the cranks. The cranks on this bike are FSA Gossamer Pros. They're an alloy crank set with alloy spindle, and a nice feature on them is that the chain ring is actually replaceable. So it's a four bolt bolt on chain ring. So if you happen to wear it out or if you're looking for a different size, you will be able to replace that chain ring separately. Tires are Schwalbe G1 Performance. They're 700 by 40 C tires on a folding bead and they do have a tubeless easy casing. So with a purchase of some valves, you could set these guys up tubeless. Tires are mounted to Marin aluminum double wall, 21 millimeter width, tubeless compatible rims. Those are laced to Marin through axle front and rear hub. The GRX lever hoods are a comfortable design. The left hand lever is set up to run the dropper post. The right hand lever has your up and down shifting integrated into your brake lever. The carbon forks have a tapered steer tube. Tons of tire clearance are a pretty beefy design and have bosses for low rider mounts or for extra storage on the legs, as well as having a mounting spot right at the bottom there for fenders if you'd like. So a cool fork. As we get into the frame, we get into an aluminum series three aluminum frame with internal cable routing. And it is a pretty distinctive shape uh, between the cutout for the rear tire and that brace between the top tube and the seat tube. The X-Dropper is a really cool feature and Marin's new gravel specific um, Beyond Road Concept Elite saddle uh, feels really good just from uh, sitting on it in the store. Appropriately wide for a gravel bike. There's a 16 degree flare on the bars, so if you go into the drops, you do feel like your hands get a little bit further apart and make you feel a bit more stable. Marin is definitely going for a sporty feel on this bike. Um, a biggest note is the fact that the rear end is quite short. That's going to make this bike feel a little bit more like a road bike when you are on pavement. Um, as another side effect, it means if you do ride this on single track or anything, and if you need to lift your front end up and over roots or rocks or upstairs, it makes the bike much more manageable than if they had designed purely around stability with a long rear end. Now, as a downside to that, if you're going to put a rear rack on the bike, it is going to affect your heel clearance. So probably better than putting a rack on is putting one of those big seat bags on. Those GRX hydraulic disc brakes, they work beautifully. If you get this bike, I can almost promise that you will be tempted to see how far you can take it. How gnarly the terrain, how bumpy, how steep, and you will be so thankful that you have brakes that work as nicely and modulate as well as those GRXs. 
Other frame features of this Series 3 aluminum frame include the internal cable routing, a threaded bottom bracket, through axle uh, rear hub, and pretty generous tire clearance. Marin's official word on tires is that you can go up to 45C tires on here. Um, on the front you could easily go more, on the rear I suspect you can go more, but they do want to be uh, sort of conservative in what they officially say for tire size. The handlebar tape is a rubbery sort of a tape with some pretty good uh, padding. So the rubbery is going to help you to not have your hands slip off if you're riding in the rain or through some bumpy stuff. And then of course it's going to add some comfort. What we've been looking at here is a 54 centimeter frame and it weighs in at 22.95 pounds. So that's as is without pedals and with tubes in the tires. And I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, if we're looking at road bikes, I mean road bikes will quite often be in that 15 to 20 pound range. So to add that amount of uh, sort of extra durability and capability and a dropper post to be at 22.95 pounds, I'm okay with that. So now to talk some opinions on the specifications and who exactly this bike is going to suit. So the elephant in the room on a bike like this is the dropper seat post. People wonder if you need it, if it's overkill, and I will say it is not overkill and you will find tons of places to use it. Largely because this bike is always going to be tempting you to see how gnarly of a terrain you can get into. That dropper post is going to make that gnarly terrain that much easier uh, to negotiate. You'll also end up finding yourself using a dropper at a set of lights when you're commuting. Um, for myself, every time I get to lights, I drop the post down, I can comfortably sit on my seat with my foot flat on the ground, and then right back up and at them uh, in proper riding position as soon as the light turns green. So who's this bike for then? I'll use myself as a prime candidate um, of somebody who absolutely loves this. I'm primarily a mountain biker, but I want a bike that I can ride around the local, ride to work, ride some simple single track, and basically just be able to go out for an aimless ride for an hour or two from home. So this has meant I've gone for pretty pure road rides on here. I've gone for gravel rides, but I do a lot of just riding whatever is in front of me. Um, and that's really the beauty of a bike like this is go for a road ride. If you look down a side road that's tempting, you can head down there too. Um, if you're on pavement and you look over and see single track, go for it. Who cares? Um, also, if you're commuting on this bike, you don't have to be super delicate. Um, you don't have to worry about curb cuts um, giving you pinch flats. You can go pretty quickly. You feel almost as efficient as a road bike. You're just not worried about the thing being delicate. That is pretty much your bike for you. It is the mountain biker's other bike. It's a commuter, it's a gravel bike, it's a road bike. As long as you don't think that you're gonna be racing road bikes, you will not really notice a downside to using this on the road. Um, it's good times, that's what it is.